Welcome to this presentation on Maptimizer, using optimization to tailor tactile maps to users' needs. My name is Megan Hoffman, and I'll be presenting on behalf of my co-authors from the University of Washington, Carnegie Mellon University, and John Hopkins University. Tactile maps are powerful tools that help people who are blind or have low vision navigate and orient in a new environment. However, compared to visual maps, they have a relatively low resolution, limiting how much we can display in them. Often, these are generated with inaccessible tools requiring a sighted cartographer to assist a person, and this makes it difficult for a person who's blind or low vision to customize a map to meet their particular needs. Maptimizer is a generative design tool that takes in information from a blind or low vision user about their preferences for information and how that information is represented, and generates a tactile map that meets those needs. It does this by pairing tactile representations to geographic features. So for instance, we can represent different locations as pegs, different pathways and road networks as line networks, and different regions like buildings, green spaces, and water spaces as different raised regions on the map. We can then layer these representations together onto a tactile map to create a map that represents a variety of pieces of information. We optimize our maps based off of three different components. Communicability, which measures how much each representation communicates information to each person. Information value, which is the value of the included geographic information on the map. And attention cost, which measures the impact of cluttered representations on the readability of the map overall. In order to maximize this objective function, we do an optimization process over two stages. In the first stage, we pair geographic features to representations, essentially creating a legend of the map. We select for the most informative features and the most communicative representations, trying to maximize the usage of different communicative representations paired to different high-valued information. In the second stage, we adjust the representations that were chosen in the first stage based off of their different sizing parameters, width, depth, and height. We do this to maximize communicativity while minimizing attention cost. In the first stage, we use linear programming to pair different representations to different geographic features. For each pair of a representation, R, and a geographic feature, G, we have a weight omega, R of G, where a zero weight implies that we are not going to pair the two, and one implies that we are going to pair the two. We then formulate our objective function as a maximizable linear equation with these different weights, and we apply a variety of different constraints so that each feature can be paired with only one representation, and each representation can only be paired with one feature, ensuring that there are no overlapping features and representations, which would make it difficult or impossible to discern between different features. In the next stage, we use the representations selected from the first stage to adjust their different sizes. Communicativity is essentially a measure of the user's preference as well as the size of representations. We presume that larger representations are going to be easier to identify. So as we increase the size of a representation, we expect that communicativity should increase. However, having more large representations is going to clutter the map, making it difficult to read overall. So as we increase size, we also expect the attention cost to increase. And colony optimization helps us explore this trade-off by stochastically exploring different representation sizes. It chooses which branch to take of adjusting these different representations, either increasing the size or decreasing the size, based off of the prior history of whether or not that increase or decrease has improved the objective function overall. In order to evaluate Maptimizer, we've done a small test using three different conditions of tactile maps. The first are standardized maps, which were uh, the same across all users and generated using a system called TouchMapper. The second were maps that were customized by participants based off of a small Google Form survey of their interests in the particular locations. And the ones generated with Maptimizer using the same information provided in that form. We conducted the study with six blind and low vision participants with a think aloud evaluation. In the first task of the study, we showed the different participants standardized, customized, and optimized maps of the same location. This gave them the opportunity to ask questions about map representations and to figure out how to use the maps for the study. We then collected information about their preferences for different types of maps. In the second task, we asked participants to identify locations based off of a verbal description, and we showed them three unique locations counterbalanced with three, the three different conditions. Based on task one, we found that participants uh, overall prefer the optimized maps over the customized and standardized maps. Only two participants per preferred the standardized maps, and no participants preferred the customized maps, which was surprising to us because we had expected the customized maps to perform better. What we found out was that the optimized maps and the standardized maps provided important contextual cues about large pieces of information that they didn't know to prefer or to add to their original maps. They also found that the optimized maps use representations that better fit the information than the standardized maps. 
In our second task, we found that the optimized maps outperformed the other types of maps in helping users identify locations quickly and accurately. All users were able to identify all of the locations with the optimized map. This was because the optimized map helped provide context that was not available in the standardized or customized maps. It also aligned representations with their preferences and minimized clutter, which was not true for the customized maps. More generally, Maptimizer supports tactile map customization at scale. It gives us an accessible means of customizing tactile maps through a non-visual design process that takes in information about the user's preferences, needs, and abilities rather than a visual design of the map. Optimization of the map allows us to quickly adapt the map to new locations or new sets of users' needs, so a user can change their different preferences in different locations or adapt it to a new space, which may have different effects on attention cost and communicativity. More broadly, Maptimizer is the confluence of optimization, digital fabrication research, and ability-based design methods. Ability-based design is usually reserved for software that can dynamically update to fit a user's needs and abilities, and digital fabrication produces static objects that cannot dynamically update. Digital fabrication can be used to adapt physical environments to users' different needs. Using models of performance, in this case information value, attention cost, and communicativity, we can optimize different tools to incorporate models of that user performance into automatically generated physical artifacts. We can also embed different contexts into those physical artifacts, in this case, geographic context. Thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out at meganh at cs.cmu.edu.